Let me tell you guys, I have seen some crazy stuff on that internet, which, no, 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 not that, or, oh, sorry, I, I misunderstood. Yeah, yeah, like that. Gaming or workstation computers with multiple processors, be they CPUs or GPUs, have become more common in recent years. And how to keep them cool, the advantages of which we cover here, is an incredibly hot topic for obvious reasons. Now, the heat generating components in your system are going to have heat sinks attached to them. You can learn more about these here and here, and why we need them. But, the main thing you need to know for this video is that unless you start getting into some pretty exotic stuff, the way all that heat generating componentry stays within its rated operating temperature is by dissipating waste heat to the surrounding air. The trick here is that heat transfer relies on two main things for best effectiveness. A lower ambient temperature, so how hot the air around the heatsink is, and more air movement. The first one's a bit tricky. Living somewhere cool or using air conditioning helps a lot. But because most electronics are surrounded by some kind of box, the air being used to cool them can be considerably hotter than the rest of the room, hurting cooling efficiency. Not to mention that the room itself can begin to heat up during heavy use. I mean, we could just pull all that stuff away, but... I guess running your electronics unprotected can have unforeseen consequences. And even if we don't want to go overboard and head outside, although I heard it has great graphics, indoors you'll find plenty of other hazards too, like pets and children. So I guess we're stuck using enclosures to keep our expensive stuff safe. So let's focus on strategy number two. Make the air move fast by adding fans. But that has some drawbacks too. There's noise, but also one that's potentially more problematic. A silent killer all around us. Dust. Dust clogs the fins of heat sinks, reducing their effectiveness, gunks up the moving parts of fans, reducing their effectiveness, and is just plain gross. And adding more airflow adds more potential for dust to accumulate unless you do it responsibly. So how do you practice safe cooling? Balanced airflow. Fans can be configured in one of two ways. Intake, pulling air into the case, or exhaust pushing it out. But the internet is full of debate about the merits of having more of one or more of the other, so let's put it to rest. If you had all your fans pushing air out, first, they'll all be working against each other, reducing each other's efficiency, and second, because fans move air rather than creating it, they have to get the air they're exhausting from somewhere, so the internal air pressure will be negative relative to the room, and the case will pull air in through nooks and crannies where dust can accumulate and also be pulled in. The other way around, trying to inflate your computer like a balloon by having everything as an intake has the same problem with the fans working against each other, but the advantage of blowing air out of the small holes in the case to prevent dust from entering there. But of course, that doesn't help if you're not filtering the dust out of the air that's being pushed into the case by a fan. So that, my friends, is the ultimate solution. A reasonably balanced airflow scheme that leans on the side of positive internal pressure so you're not cancelling out any of the work that's being done with filters on the intakes so that you don't have excess dust coming in. And don't worry if you can't afford filters Filters. Used pantyhose works great. Something to note here is that surprisingly, the conventional wisdom of hot air rises actually has very little impact on any of this. So the most important takeaway is balance. If you don't have a fancy smoke machine like the one Silverstone uses to test their cases, just watch in the longer term for dust accumulation in areas like mesh panels and areas around optical drive bays. And if you're starting to see that in spite of your filtered intakes, it might be time to adjust the ratio of intake to exhaust for your system. Speaking of systems, sort of, Squarespace.com is the sponsor of today's episode of Fast As Possible. Their web-based management system, see, I, I brought that around somehow, allows you to quickly create your own amazingly customizable, functional, beautiful website. They provide a logo maker, templates that will make your site look great on desktop and mobile without any additional hassle, and they even take care of your flexible, scalable hosting solution so you know you can rely on your site being up as online traffic to your business grows. Squarespace is very reasonably priced, and if you head over to squarespace.com slash Linus, you can save 10% on your purchase of a brand brand new website using offer code Linus. So thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode and thanks to you guys for watching it. 
Like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, leave a comment suggesting future episodes as fast as possible, and also leave a comment if any like Squarespace sites you have. I do actually read the comments on my videos, so I'd love to check them out, whether it's a blog or whether it's a store or whether it's a portfolio or something like that. Love to see that. Anyway, I think that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already.